You're hey, welcome back. This is News File, the most authoritative news analysis platform brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN, everywhere you go. Ashesi University, educating ethical and entrepreneur leaders for Africa, Robert and Sons Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care service provider for 31 years. We lead properties, home is where one starts. Duraplast, where Duraplast goes, water flows. And Trasaco Fast Floor, stronger, faster, and affordable. Now let's get to that portion of the statement where the president isolated one issue that needs amendment in the constitution. Well, he says that people have been calling for amendments. Yes, amendments are good um, where they are necessary. And this is one part that he believes deserves attention. We know that groups like Fix the Country have been calling for a total overhaul. And for me, that word is not new to me. Last time, the first time I heard the use of the word overhaul of the Constitution was from this president when he was not president. Then we spent millions of dollars in the Constitution review, collating views from all over the country the biggest socio-political data that we could ever give ourselves, that has been gathering dust because of political, ideological, if there is actually ideology. I think the, the parties don't actually practice ideology, uh, disagreements. So, is the president right when he says there's no consensus for amending the constitution so that his promise which he has kept for all the time that he was campaigning for president, all the three times, can be effected. Is he right about it? Let's begin right here in the studio with Suli. Well, um, Samson, briefly, I think that the president's statement is um, quite misleading if he states emphatically that there was or is no consensus on the matter of electing MMDCEs. I think that there is consensus. The only difference is whether or not we should have MMDCEs elected on partisan basis or otherwise. And during the proposed referendum to amend Article 55.3, yes, uh, I remember the NDC at some point came out to say, well, they are opposed to it and therefore would urge their members to vote no. Um, and, then, and, and they also made it clear that it wasn't because they are opposed to the whole idea of electing MMDCs, but their point was that it should be done in a non-partisan way so that people would not contest for MMDCs on the tickets of MPP, NDC, APC, and so on and so forth. And the argument they made at the time was that it would be an extension of you know, the violent scenes that we see uh, during national elections being extended to the district level. And we need some level of cohesion and all of that at the district level. For um, the president and those who were uh, um, in support of his position, the idea was that, well, we needed to vote to have uh, MMDCEs on the basis of NDC, MPP, and so on and so forth. And they went on to say that, yes, even though that may result in the fact that if you take voter region, for example, at the moment, we would end up having DCEs who are aligned to the NDC, what that would give us is some sort of power sharing. So that the whole idea that the president is too powerful, appoints almost everyone and so on, would be diminished. So uh, there is consensus when it comes to electing our MMDCEs. Where there is no consensus is whether or not it should be done on a partisan basis or not. And I have said that, well, my view is that it shouldn't be done on a partisan basis. And on that score, if we would want to have it done in terms of elections, it's not just um, the case of Article you know, 55.3. I think it's about Article 234.1, which actually makes it possible for Parliament to you know, make an amendment because that particular provision is not an entrenched uh, provision. And for that reason, Parliament can make um, changes to that particular clause, which says that there shall be a district chief executive for every district who shall be appointed by the president with the prior approval of not less than two-thirds of majority of members of the assembly. And so once it is not an entrenched clause, 
It's just by having parliament to do it. So if the president is indeed committed to the principle of having our MMDC is elected, nothing stops him from making a proposal for parliament to amend article 2431. You know, basically to read something like there shall be a chief executive for every district who shall be elected by qualified voters in a, 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 in a particular district through universal adult suffrage. And there we go to have our MMDCEs elected so that we will have them just as we have the assembly members. Because when you go around, you don't have an NDC assemblyman, MPP assemblyman, even though we know that behind the scenes, the political parties sponsor, you know, candidates to contest. And at the end of every uh, district assembly elections, parties are able to tell whether they've lost on the ground or they are winning on and the ground. And that is breaching the law. Yeah, that's breaching the law. Yes, but the, those who say we should make it partisan say that you have already been breaching the law. Why don't you just change it so that you can continue without breaching it? Well, but that, that is to say that, well, uh, impunity is fine. So long as you can breach the law and there, is, there are no sanctions, well, let's continue to do it. Okay. I think what is good would be to say, well, we've been breaching the law. What steps can we take to prevent you know, further breach of the law? Let me go to uh, Professor Kwesiening. And I think that, as you mentioned, that um, the NDC, like the president said, it was the NDC that uh, ensured that this um, referendum that was supposed to be done on the 17th of December 2019 was botched. Yes, that is correct. But I'm, I'm sure everybody knows my views because I was your chief campaigner on this subject. And when the history comes to be written, let me say this, that I know that the NDC had in fact agreed to what the president wanted. Some civil society organizations agreed. It was about some three weeks to the referendum that I started a campaign that turned the entire thing around. And we referred to the Constitution Reviews Commission's report which was very clear that the framers were clear that this is not what to do. Other countries practice it without being partisan. Why can't we do the same? So, uh, Professor Kwesiening, the president says sometime in his presidency, he's going to seek consensus and bring the matter back. When he had absolute numbers in parliament, he couldn't do this. Is this a promise he's genuine about at a time when there is a hung parliament? I'm not sure. As I said earlier on, I mean, if we analyze the utterances, it means discourses of politicians in Ghana and the factual delivery of what they promise, then the result does not look very promising. So on the on the basis of the historical trajectory and taking into consideration that by mid next year, the elections or the preparations for the elections will be fully blown or will be in full blown movement, um, it will take a peculiar intervention by the president to get it done. But something the, this goes the, beyond. Prof, Prof, there's this other question being asked. He should show the commitment beyond the words. When he had absolute majority in parliament, he didn't do it because the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians said, we want to elect them, but we don't want them to be elected on MPP and DC basis. You have the power to ensure that parliament you know, amends Article 243. You don't need us in a referendum, expensive referendum, to amend Article 35.3. So um, if then the view was that, well, that is what it was, and today he feels that it can only be done by consensus, he has passed, got e-levy, even in this hung parliament, why doesn't he go ahead and have, it, and have it pass, rather than talking about going to get consensus, and that will be from the NDC, which is very clear that he doesn't want it this way? Well, I mean, I think what it then means is that we are not going to have it. And I think that in a short to medium term, it's not good for 
deepening, strengthening our democracy and what it implies at the local uh, level. When people vote directly for those who govern them at the local level, there's more demand for accountability, there's more demand for delivery of services, because people do know that if you don't deliver, well, we will kick you out because we made you who you are. I think one of our panelists earlier on stated this almost imperial power to appoint without any recourse to an assessment of the person's uh, capacity to deliver. So were we to be able to hold these bipartisan elections, that would keeping the democracy that we, we have. Mm. But I'm saying part of the challenge also is that, I mean, we've heard these promises over and over and over again. When people are in, in a position, they say one thing. When they get power, they say it's the other thing. You know, so the real question for me becomes, what are the opportunities for the generality of the Ghanaian electorate to say, look, we want this done and we want it done within a certain period? Because otherwise, this will become a political football. It, it will keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mm. I mean, this is not a thing that I follow very closely, but I do know that when, when citizens have a say in those who govern them directly at the local level, there's more accountability, there's more delivery of services. And then, and then people feel as if Mm. They have a stake in who they've chosen and by extension the performance of that in individual. So were we to get it done, mm. it will be useful, it will deepen our democratic processes. Mm. People will feel that they have a stake in what is going on. And then this fear of the threat will go away precisely because we are all part on the team and ensuring the things that are all right. Uh, Dr. Osayan Kwapong, yeah, recently the CDD, you did, you, you did a poll, and um, your poll got over 70%, as in, I think it was 71% of uh, Ghanaians in favor of non-partisan DCE elections. The overwhelming views of the people must be known to the president. No? You're correct, um, um, uh, and, I, and I'm sure when that report was, uh, was shared publicly, uh, I'm sure it made its way uh, to the president and other uh, key stakeholders uh, in, uh, in this conversation. Mm. The challenge then is if in the mind of the president uh, that he strongly believes that this is something that we have to do and do on a uh, on a partisan basis, because I think that's where the consensus broke down, right? The consensus is not so much that we don't want them elected. The question is, what format do we want um, this election to take place? Do we want it to be done on a partisan basis, or do we want it to be done on a non-partisan basis? The president, I sincerely believes that uh, this is something that has to be done uh, on a on a partisan basis. Is, is this, is then this the question deliberate? then becomes, how do you use mm. your office mm. to convince, uh, if you want to go the parliamentary route that um, you suggest, and I think um, um, uh, Sule. Mr. Sule also suggested, the question is, I don't see a realistic path there because of the nature of the current composition of the uh, of, of, of parliament and some some of the already difficulties tensions in there mm. right so then the part the other part then is a national referendum yeah. but given how citizens you know at least through the cdd poll that shows that majority want a non-partisan election the challenge for the president is how does he use uh, his office um, and his part to be able to convince citizens that they must they must do otherwise and there, 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 there's a bigger question in there uh, about whether this democracy is actually what we say it is. Uh, when the overwhelming majority consistently say that this is what we want, and the person who has been voted to superintend the process says, like they say when we're kids, 
you are lucky to be bought a uh, football, you know, by your parents, and you take it to the field. When you are playing and things are not going well for you, you pick it, you run away. That's what the president did in the first place. And now he's, just, he's still saying, if it is not my way, then there's no consensus. What kind of democracy is this? But the question I'm asking you is, m most of his people within the party are against making it uh, non-partisan, uh, are against making it, you know, even partisan. Because if that is done, then, you know, some parties may get some, you know, vote somewhere and get an, an, uh, a DC somewhere. And they feel that if it should be done, let it be done by some other leader, not through you. This is our time. Let us enjoy. Pick the people, handpick them, like the Constitution empowers you, rather than give it out to the people to decide. Is, would you say that this is deliberate to keep that position so that he will appoint the DCEs uh, for all the time of his presidency? Well, I mean, that's, that's, his, that's his position, right? Um, and it, it goes counter to public sentiment, or even as you said, it goes counter to some of the sentiments of people uh, in, in, in his own party. But that is also what leadership uh, is also sometimes about, which is, are you able to convince people enough to change their mind and change their position? Or the other way around is, is the evidence so overwhelming that um, as president, you're willing to uh, shift, your, uh, shift your position on that? But I think for me, the president's position and what it is presenting is you can either, I think he has framed it as, you can either let us do it uh, on a partisan basis, or I can continue to exercise my power uh, to a point in the way that it, uh, it, is, it is designed. And it's, it seems like that is the, the, the choice that uh, is being presented. The question for the opponents then for me would be, uh, which one is, quote unquote, the lesser of two evils? Um, are we willing to live by the continuous appointment of these officers uh, by the president, or are we willing to make some compromises uh, and, and, and say that, okay, maybe if the choice was between president appoints versus doing this on a partisan basis, uh, it may not be that bad doing it uh, on, a, uh, on a partisan basis. I particularly am of the view that um, I don't think the sky would come falling if we do this uh, on a on a partisan basis. That's that's my that's my position. I know yeah. folks have expressed concerns about what we see partisan politics do at a national level, and therefore we don't want it to seep it at a at a local uh, to the local level. But yeah. I am of the opinion that the sky would not fall if we do this on a partisan uh, basis at the local level. Okay, um, Mary. Mary, is, is this not a point, the president's posture, is it not a point to feather the argument by those, uh, like uh, the likes of the Fix the Country, who say we, are not, we don't have a functioning democracy, that if democracy is what it's, it's, we say it is, how come the president's view must hold sway against the overwhelming majority Ghanaian view? Unfortunately, that is the constitution we all drafted and we agreed to. Uh, fortunately for us today, we have an opportunity to ensure that we change that. I say unfortunately because uh, reading through, you realize that the powers of the president are so, 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 so huge. Uh, he could do anything and get away with it. Uh, is it not interesting that we say we are a democracy? Is it not interesting that we say it is a democracy is the rule of the majority, but yet still, at every juncture, when the majority wants its will, then the president decides that that is not what he wants to see. And so for this argument, this is a constitutional review uh, process that went on and the proposals were made. Uh, these proposals were uh, rejected. 
And so, if whether it was by another government or whatever, we know that governments are continuums. And for that matter, if this is done, and let me quickly add that at some point, there was a discussion on the whole, reviewing the whole constitution by civil society when we had interactions with the president. And at that point, the president mentioned that uh, reviewing the, uh, picking up the proposals from the Constitutional Review Commission and also the white paper would mean that we are overhauling the whole constitution and creating a new one. And, and for him, that was not a priority for him at the time. So it's not surprising that today his only priority in the scheme of things is that we get DCEs elected and it must be on partisan basis. Yeah, so my question, is, my question is, my question is, what do we do with that? A while ago, we were priding ourselves about our democracy. Uh, in the preamble of our constitution and also in Article 1 of the Constitution, Article 1, that's the very first article of the constitution. It says a sovereignty of Ghana the sovereignty of Ghana. Sovereignty is ultimate power. It says the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised. So if power is in the people, how come the president is turning it, you know, the other way? And that is okay, especially in the midst of having spent uh, Six point three million dollars to do a constitution review, and that is gathering dust. Power is in the people, and as you have read, power that is in the people is exercised, and that exercise of the power is put in the president, and so the president is supposed to dispense of that power in the name of the people. And the people's representatives, additionally, are those that are in parliament to ensure that the will of the people is upheld. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And we do not have much of a leeway to operationalize unless we go back to the power of the term mm. when elections time come. The people and civil society, let me say what we can do. The issues around the... Uh, fix the country, the Occupy Ghana civil society activism over time. It's what we can do more, our advocacy to ensure that things do not get done. And uh, you as an individual, I remember in the last campaign for this to pass, when you pick this up and engage on the basis of fact, people came to appreciate why they should not be part of this process and they refused to be part of the process and the process truncated on its own. And so it's for us as a people to rise and be proactive, to rise and reject some of these things, not unlawfully, using all the lawful means mm. of association and also of ensuring that the president hears that we voted for him, uh, he needs to hear us at some point. Because of recent, we have seen that impunity is what we are striving from the executive to whoever is appointed because the, the, the people have presided the power in the president and the president has that power to appoint. And he says, and at a point he said, uh, you have your views, but I am the one the people voted for. So mm. I am the one who will be held accountable. Okay. And so when it comes to accountability, then the people will definitely be able to say that this is our verdict if you did what the people asked you to do. All right. Now, let's go to uh, Mercy Labi. And, but uh, Mary has said that the process truncated on itself or by itself. No. Uh, the fact, as we know, is that there was an overwhelming population that was going to vote no to reject the president's proposal. And then he truncated it, denied people the opportunity to vote no, to say no to him. And now he wants a consensus to bring it back. Yes, uh, Mercy Labi, um, what will be your take on what has to be done uh, to navigate this process where very clearly people say they want uh, DCs elected but not on partisan basis. In fact, they are said so in the constitution review process 
largely. Now, we say uh, we have to go for consensus again. Thank you, Samson. Um, the, on the issue of partisan uh, election of DCs, I think some of the panelists have been able to give us the advantages, the merits and then the merits of either partisan or uh, non-partisan. We have to look at the issue very well. The first time when I was spoken, I thought about the, the, the constitutional review, as you stated rightly, that the constitutional review was done based on the involvement of all the people in Ghana, as you have stated rightly. They went all over the country seeking views of Ghanaians on what to be done with the, the current constitution that we have. And the last time I heard you, I have not seen a copy, but I heard you saying that we have about almost 1,000 pages of that document lying down, gathering ducks. It's exactly a 1,000 page document. Very well. I think it's hard time we have to go back to that document again and look at what Ghanaian said in that document. Voting the, uh, the, the district assembly elections, when we come to terms that we want to vote for our DCs, we knew what we were saying. So it's good that we vote during DCs. It's clear that you can see uh, partisan when they are, there is uh, this district assembly elections, even when you look at this, somebody's poster, you can easily determine where the person is coming from, the colors, though it's not partisan. But it's good that we do the election because we have a lot of allegations on corruption during this appointment of DCs because they have to, and it's alleged that they have to pay their way through when they come to power, they have to recoup whatever they have spent mm. for paying their way through. So if we are able to elect our DCs, it will reduce some of these allegations of corruption and paying uh, the delegates, campaign delegates and other things all over to vote or uh, confirm the president appointee. I think we should look at what Ghanaians want. And that is what we have stated in the constitutional review. And that is non-partisan. That is my view. Mm. We should be able to look at what all, because we have human rights. And as I, I said at the beginning, mm. right to participate in decision making is very key. We have participated in the decision making. And our decision is that we want it to be done on non-partisan basis. I think we have to go for that one. That is my view. We have to go for that one on okay. non-partisan okay. basis. All that right. is my view. OK, uh, thank you very much. And the Constitution Review Commission um, uh, said that why not? Uh, if it's done in Canada, if it's, it's done in India and other countries, the non-partisan way, why can we not do it? But among one of the reasons they said was that the commission observes that the Committee of Experts, which drafted the proposals for the 1992 Constitution, noted that the non-partisan nature of the district assemblies has the potential to facilitate the mobilization of the people at the local level and is more conducive to consensus formation, factors that are crucial to development efforts at the grassroots level. We take our break here and return to the U.S. State Department's um, report on human rights. Are they facts, repeated facts, or not exactly a reflection of what is happening in Ghana in our media front, uh, corruption, and the judiciary? We'll be right back.